Hey guys, welcome back again to an another exciting video. Previously, we have discussed about the Dholak. We hope you have learned a lot about it from the previous video. If you have not seen it, then you can catch up with it by clicking the link in description. Here in today's video, we will give you the complete introduction on Sitar. Stay tuned till the end of the video for 10 interesting facts about the Sitar. Therefore, before we begin, if you are new to this channel and like the content what we post, then you should go and hit the subscribe button right now along with the bell icon so that you will never miss this kind of interesting videos when we upload them. Let's get started. The sitar is a plugged stringed instrument originating from the Indian subcontinent used in Hindustani classical music. The instrument was invented in the medieval India and flourished in the 16th and 17th centuries and arrived at its present form in the 18th century India. Used widely throughout the Indian subcontinent, the sitar became popularly known in the wider world through the works of Pandit Ravi Shankar beginning in the late 1950s and early 1960s. In the history, Veena is the precursor of sitar. Sitar is said to have been invented or rather developed from the Veena by Amir Khusro, a famous Sufi inventor, poet and pioneer of Khayal, Tarana and Kawali during the 13th century. The name sitar originates from the Persian se plus tar literally meaning three strings. However, this instrument can have up to 21 strings. Here in this picture, you will find the various parts of a sitar. You can note it down in your notebook as well. A sitar can have 18, 19, 20 or 21 strings. 6 or 7 of these are played strings which run over curved raised frets and the remainder are sympathetic strings also known as tarp or tarif or tarafdar which run underneath the frets and resonate in sympathy with the played strings. These strings are generally used to set the mood of a raga at a very beginning of a presentation. The frets which are known as parda or thought are movable allowing fine tuning. The played strings run to tuning pegs on or near the head of the instrument while the sympathetic strings which are a variety of different lengths pass through small holes in the fretboard to engage with the smaller tuning pegs that run down the instrument's neck. The instrument has two bridges, the large bridge Bada Gora for playing and drone strings and the small bridge Chota Gora for the sympathetic strings. Its timber results from the way the strings interact with the wide sloping bridge. As a string reverberates, its length changes slightly as its edge touches the bridge, promoting the creation of overtones and giving the sound its distinctive tone. The maintenance of this specific tone by shaping the bridge is called Jawari. Many musicians rely on the instrument makers to adjust this. Materials used in construction include teak wood or tun wood, Cedrela tuna, which is a variation of mahogany for the neck and face plates stubbly and calabash goads for the resonating chambers. The instrument's bridges are made of deer horn, ebony or very occasionally from camel bone. Synthetic material is now common as well. Now let's check out the construction styles. There are two popular modern styles of sitar offered in a variety of sub-styles and decorative patterns. The two popular styles are the full decorated instrumental style sitar, sometimes called as Ravi Shankar style sitars and the Gayaki style sitar. 
The other type of sitar, the instrumental sitar is most often made of seasoned toon wood but sometimes made of burma teak wood. It is often fitted with the second resonator, a small tumba, pumpkin or pumpkin like wood replica on the neck. This style is usually fully decorated with floral or grape carvings and celluloid inlays with colored often brown or red and black floral or arabesque patterns it typically has 13 sympathetic strings it is said that the best burma teak sitars are made from teak that has been seasoned for generations therefore instrument builders look for old burma teak that was used in old colonial style villas as whole trunk columns for their special sitar constructions the source of very old seasoned wood are a highly graduated trade secret and sometimes a mystery there are various additional substyles and cross mixes of styles in sitars according to customer preferences most importantly there are some differences in preferences for the positioning of sympathetic the rough string pegs Here in this picture you will find the various styles of sitar used by some of the famous sitarists. Amongst all sitar styles there are student styles, beginner models, semi pro models, pro models, master models and so on. Prices are often determined by the manufacturer's name and not by the looks alone or materials used. Some sitars by certain manufacturers fetch very high collectible prices. Most notable are older Rikhi Ram Delhi and older Hiran Roy Kolkata sitars depending upon which masters build the instrument. Now let's see the tuning of the sitar. Tuning depends on the sitarist's school or style, tradition and each artist's personal preference. The main playing string is almost invariably tuned to a perfect fourth above the tonic the second string being tuned to the tonic the tonic in the indian solfege system is referred to as sarja saraj or the shortened form of sa or kharaj a dialectical variant of saraj not as vad and the perfect fifth to which one or more of the drone strings are tuned is referred to as pancham not samvad the player should retune for each raga strings are tuned by tuning pegs and the main playing strings can be fine tuned by sliding a bead thread on each string just below the bridge in one or more of the common tunings used by ravi shankar among others called kharaj pancham sitar the playable strings are strung in this fashion chikari strings sa high sa middle and pa kharaj the bass strings sa lo and pa lo jod and baj strings are sa and ma there is a lot of stylistic variants within these tunings and like most indian string instrument there is no default tuning mostly tunings vary by schools of teaching or gharana and the piece that is meant to be played now let's see the playing techniques the different and well known gharanas for sitar training are imdad khani gharana seniya gharana indoor gharana or known as binkar gharana maihar gharana jaipur gharana and last bishnupur gharana The instrument is balanced between the player's left foot and right knee. The hands move freely without having to carry any of the instrument's weight. The player plucks the string using a metallic pick or plectrum called the mizrab. The thumb stays anchored on the top of the fretboard just above the main gourd. Generally Only the index and middle fingers are used for fingering although a few players occasionally use the third. A specialized technique called mead involves pulling the main melody string down 
over the bottom portion of the sitar's curved frets with which the sitarist can achieve a seven semitone range of microtonal notes however because of the sitar's movable frets sometimes a fret may be set to a microtone already and no bending would be required adept player bring in charisma through the use of special technique like kan kirtan murki zamzama etc they also use mizrab bowls as in mizrabani and create chants even in odd numbered taals like jhumra now let's see the 10 interesting facts about sitar to begin with fact number 1 In the late 1950s and early 1960s, Pandit Ravi Shankar, along with his tabla player Allah Rakha, began a further introduction of Indian classical music to the Western culture. Fact number two: the sitar became popular in modern music for a period in the 1960s when it was used in music by the Rolling Stones, the Doors, and the Beatles. George Harrison. a member of the iconic group the beatles learned to play the sitar from pandit ravi shankar he then used the instrument in several of the beatles songs including love you too norwegian wood and within you without you the beatles association with the instrument helped popularize indian classical music among western youth particularly once harrison began receiving tutelage from pandit ravi shankar and the latest protege shambhu das in 1966 fact number 3 brian jones one of the original members of the rolling stones played the sitar in the song painted black and would use it on later stones tracks such as the 1968 street fighting man while another english guitarist dave mason played it on traffic's 1967 hits paper sun and hole in my shoe these and other examples marked a trend of featuring the instrument in pop songs which pandit ravi shankar later described as the great sitar explosion fact number 4 Speaking to Carla Beat in July 1967 he said many people especially young people have started listening to sitar since George Harrison one of the Beatles became my disciple it is now the in thing led zeppelin's jimmy page talked about his love of indian music saying i went to india after i came back from a tour with the yardbirds in the late 60s just so i could hear the music first hand let's put it in this way i had a sitar before george harrison got his i wouldn't say i played it as well as he did though the east indian scales used on the track friends led zap 3 kashmir are considered fine examples of the influence of the sitar in rock music the doors extensively used indian and north eastern scales in their psychedelic soundscapes fact number 6 robby craigers guitar part on the end was heavily influenced by indian ragas and features melodic and rhythmic qualities that suggest a sitar or veena fact number 7 fleetwood max gold dust woman features the instrument as well fact number 8 Many pop performances actually involve the electric sitar, a solid body guitar like instrument quite different from the traditional acoustic Indian instrument. Danny Dias played the electric sitar on Do It Again, Steely Dance song, the opening track of Steely Dance Can't Buy a Thrill album. Fact number 9. Progressive metal band The Harp Machine uses sitar in the background of some of their songs psychedelic music bands often use new recording techniques and effects and drew on non western sources such as the ragas and drones of indian music the electric prunes appeared in early ads for the vox wah wah pedal which touted the effects ability to make an electric guitar sound like a sitar Today it is the most popular instrument in northern India 
Pakistan and Bangladesh and is a symbol of their music and culture. Lastly, fact number 10. Modern music still continues to experiment with the sitar and its unique sound in music being produced today. Well, that was the complete introduction on the instrument sitar. We hope you have understood today's concept. If you have any queries then feel free to contact us. You will find the contact details down in the description. If you have liked today's video then don't forget to drop a like to it and share it with your family and friends so that even they get to know about their favorite instrument. You should go and hit the subscribe button and ask your friends to do so so that you and them both don't miss the exciting videos when we upload them. You can follow us over Facebook and Instagram for more updates. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video very soon. Till then, you can watch the rest of the videos which are going to appear right now here on the screen. Enjoy it!